Jean-Claude Carrière. Um, I'm going to start by asking you a question that I'm sure you have had uh, often, but it's um, with Louis Buñuel, he worked with a lot of different screenwriters, um, but his closest collaboration uh, was with you. Um, that's what he said. That's what he said. Mm. Um, I think he made six, you made six films together? Nine scripts. Nine scripts. Six of them became uh, Buñuel's films. Okay, okay. Mm. I suppose, why, why do you think it worked so well together? We made a, a, a film together, and when he was uh, approached by the producers to make Belle de Jour, the second film, mm -hmm. he asked in his contract to, to work with me. So I was extremely, it was extraordinary you know, to me, you know, the, as a condition to make the film. Mm. So we became not only collaborators, but uh, very good uh, friends. Going to a rather different period in his filmmaking career, with the, the Mexico period, has sort of it's always struck me that he was incredibly productive in that period mm. of time. I think it's something like 20 films he made within 43 and 54. From 46 to 16, I make a little more. Right. But some of the Mexican films are really interesting, mm. and in, in each of them, there is something really Buñuelian. J'étais toujours très rapide, toujours par nerf, le nerf, je sais pas quoi, mais, mais je me suis habitué à être économique et rapide. Et vos films ont eu du succès au Mexique Très peu, très peu. Aucun Aucun. Il euh, y a un certain succès, mais aucun. Los Olvidados a été reçu comment Très mal, très mal. Comme une insulte au pays Comme une insulte au pays. Il existe un sentiment nationaliste au Mexique <rire> Énorme. Énorme. We, we must not forget that uh, he made three films when he was young, three short films, uh, An Andalusian Dog, uh, Golden Age, and uh, yeah. Las Urdes. Mm -hmm. And then he, he, the civil war started. And for 15 years, mm. he didn't make any film. Was he unable to? He just no, he was living in the, the States. Right. He was working at the Museum of Modern Art. He was broke. Uh, and he was, he, he didn't know what to do, you know. Uh, in 1950, we saw at the Cannes Film Festival Los Olvidados. Los, and that film. was Resurrection of Benoit. Right. There's also um, Wuthering Heights. Yeah, of course. Which, um, it's a fascinating film. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's rather difficult to see these days. All uh, the ending of Wuthering Heights are very good. Mm. Very strong. Mm. Made very little money to, to make it. Wuthering Heights, he also, as I understand, he'd made, he'd written a screenplay for it in, 19, in the 1930s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was only in 54 that he was able yeah, to yeah, make yeah. it. Um, and presumably that was funding? Of course he was suffering uh, from the lack of money mm. to make films. Mm. But he did his best and he became very famous in Mexico as a filmmaker. Mm. And when he won the, the Golden Palm in, in Cannes mm -hmm. with Viridiana, mm -hmm. that was mm. uh, a miracle. Es grandísima. Mejor. Así cabremos todos. ¿Cuántos pisos hay? Dos. Veridiana is a very strange story. He shot in Spain. It's a Spanish film, which was selected by the Cannes Film Festival, the Golden Festival. Won the Golden Palm and was prohibited in Spain. The whole film. Yeah. And what was the official reason given for its censorship? Probably the religious aspect of the, of the scene of the Last Supper. The, the Spanish were coming you know, to the to the French cities to see the film, mm. like they did for Belle de Jour. Mm. And, and when you were working from a novel, for example, with Belle de Jour, mm -hmm. how would you deal with 
the novel itself. But if so we, we if like in Belle de Jour or The Chambermaid, we decide from an agreement to adapt a book, mm -hmm. that means that there are some elements in the book which interest us, mm -hmm. of course. You know. mm -hmm. So the first work is to look for that. Mm -hmm. The film is totally different because from the very beginning, we had uh, decide to give that character of another... Catherine Deneuve character. Yeah, Catherine yeah. Deneuve mm -hmm. character, Belle de Jour. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the woman who goes to some uh, brothers uh, in the afternoon, Belle de Jour, to give her a sort of uh, <coughs> personal territory of daydreams. You know, the, the, we all have daydreams, you know. And, and to shoot these daydreams, that's not as only in the book. Et vous accepteriez? Il y a trop de monde ici. Tant mieux. Il faudra absolument que je vous donne le reçu. J'y compte bien. Avec ça Oui. Qu'est-ce qu'ils font Oh, rien. Ils s'amusent. Vous pouvez jeter un coup d'œil Non, non, racontez-moi. Pas de... The, the dreams are all real because we asked many, so about 10, 15 women to tell us about their daydreams because we didn't want two men to, mm. to enter, you know, the black continent, the famous black <laughs> continent. Mm. We, had no, we, feel, we felt we had no right to invent. So we asked to, uh, we went to many, many places, including brothers uh, in Spain. Mm -hmm to ask the madame, the lady, to tell us stories about the bourgeois who used to come to make some money, you know, at the end of the month. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And they, uh, apparently it's very common. Mm -hmm. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. C'est vous qui vous, qui vous occupez de... Je suis madame Anaïs. Benoît says that the most important thing for him when he was working on a screenplay with you or other people was to develop the sense of suspense mm -hmm. in a film. He seems really to have wanted yeah, yeah. to do that. And how did you, for That's the films that you worked yeah. together with him, how, how did you work that? That's probably what we wrote some films who apparently have no solution. There are some scenes in Phantom of Freedom or this creature of the bourgeoisie, mm -hmm. scenes which go nowhere. I mean, he brings that up very much in Phantom of Liberty, yeah. I think. He says that he was inspired to make that film from a previous scene in a previous film. From one scene, yeah, yes. uh, uh, that he never shot before. Right. The, the little girl, lost and found, you know. Uh, right, yeah. They have, uh, there is a little girl which is lost. She's, uh, she's not uh, at the school. Uh, the parents, you know, look for her, but she's there all the time, you know. Mm. They go to the police station to to ask for the police to search, to look for her, she is with them all the time. That sort of uh, contradiction between what we see and what we see, mm -hmm. I, I love that. And mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the, probably one, one of the most Brunelian scenes we, ever, we have ever written. Je vois. Est-ce que vous avez un témoin? Il y a la nurse. C'est vous qui avez accompagné cet enfant à l'école? Il y a, uh, oui, monsieur le commissaire. Mais je ne suis pour rien. Ce n'est pas moi. J'ai fait comme tous les jours. Je l'ai laissé devant la porte. Ce n'est pas vrai, Aliette Si, si. Elle a fait comme tous les jours. Elle m'a laissé devant la porte. Tu parleras lorsqu'on t'interrogera. Nous allons d'abord remplir une fiche de disparition. Vous avez bien fait de l'amener. Ça nous facilite beaucoup les choses. Viens ici, mon petit. When we work together, uh, it was always, you know, in a remote place, far from the cities, and just the two of us. Every morning, the first work was to tell each other his dreams. That was quite important, to open the day with the dreams, you know. Because he used to say a very famous phrase by André Breton, uh, talking about somebody he didn't like. This man is a bastard, he never dreams. <laughs> so, you'd better dream, you know, have dream. And if you don't, uh, by any chance, uh, you had no dreams the night before, you'd better invent something, you know. And, <laughs> and would they nourish ideas for the screenplays? Yeah. And uh, just open us, you know, yeah. to, 
sort of to imaginary try to, to, to free ourselves from all the, the things that we're obliged to do mm. and to think mm. and to consider every day, you mm. know, to try to find this space-time in which we make so many efforts mm. to penetrate, mm. to enter. Actually, you mentioned the, the film that he was working on and then he said he couldn't do it. Mm. And he does talk, it's mentioned here, and I wondered whether this was the film, because he describes it about being about terrorism, science, yeah. and the free press. Yeah, he yeah, gives yeah. these three descriptions. In his last three films, mm -hmm. there are stories about terrorism. He was obsessed. For instance, in the last one, uh, that obscure object of desire, And he used to say that, uh, which is quite interesting, that terrorism is a new language between people. Instead of writing to each other to tell stories on speeches, we send a bomb. It mean it has a meaning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was quite interesting. He would mm -hmm. say, uh, one day, if you disagree with your mother-in-law, so you send her a bomb. She will understand. It struck me because it seems to be so pertinent today, yeah, yeah, yeah. how he describes it. And he also seemed to have this long-running, kind of conflictual relationship with the press as well. And he has a very striking image here where he says, if I die, and I'm, one thing I would like to do um, is come back from the grave and take a few newspapers and read, the, read what's going on in the world. I wrote a small book mm -hmm. a few years ago called the Buñuel Waking Up, where I do exactly what he, what he wishes somebody to do. I go to his grave in Paris with some reviews and papers, and I, I knock at the, at the coffin, and he wakes up, and we talk, because I wanted to know about his reactions, you know, about what's going on today. He has a sort of strange prophetic gift, you know, sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially at that time in the 60s, 70s, nobody talked about terrorism at all. The death man. Le merdon te le coupé. Oui, non. Non, 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 non.